Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome to um, the next workshop, uh, or next online workshop about um, uh, flat roof membranes and especially uh, in, in particularly in strata. Um, what I might get everyone to do, just if you're not familiar with Zoom, um, we will be using the chat box um, a little bit today. So for questions and um, stuff like that. So that'll be in, in, um, in, I think on your view, it's actually down the bottom. It'll be, it'll be in the, one of the tools you will we'll use in, in the, in the chats. So um, um, the chat box we'll use just for, yeah, just post in your questions and, um, and any comments that you might like us to address um, uh, during the workshop. Uh, and also, if you can mute uh, yourself, and um, and then um, we'll uh, we'll we'll start the session. All right, let's get into it. All right, so flat roof membranes we're going to be covering today. Um, what I would like everyone to do, if you just just for for a minute, is just just post in the chat uh, what you'd like to get out of today's session. And, um, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll read some of those out and we'll, we'll cover them. Just post that in the chat for us. Any comments, anything that you'd like to see out of today's session? Any comments there? No takers. Testing. Testing. Sorry, guys. We're just sorting out <laughs> our volume so we can hear you. Oh, yeah, no problem. So no, no, no worries. No Some worries. Season. All good. So we've got one from Richard. Um, use of concrete additives uh, as an alternative to membranes. Yes, definitely. We'll, we'll cover that. Yep. For sure. Um, um, a lot of, um, there's a lot of that in the industry. So we'll definitely cover that one. Uh, we can cover that. We've, we've got um, we've got that as one of your questions too, Richard. So we'll we'll cover that one for sure in the uh, in the question section. Any other any other interests or um, particular interests that people might want to hear about in in this session? No more takers. All right, let's get straight into it, eh? All right, so a little bit about us. Um, Wayne, you want to? You can do your intro. Yeah, so I've um, I've got over twenty five years within the industry. Um, I'm at the moment. I'm uh, looking after all the sales that come in uh, through Danro, um, and I'm doing a lot of the remedial uh, estimating. Uh, my background, I've got a diploma in uh, building and construction. Um, so being a licensed builder, a waterproofer, and also an electrician. <laughs> so yeah, a little bit of uh, experience under my belt. And myself, my name's Daniel. So um, I'm the current CEO of the NRA Group. Um, basically my role is strategy sales and team. And on the like Wayne, we did our builder's license together. So that was fun. And I've got an MBA and I'm also a builder and waterproofer. Little bit about the business itself. So we we class ourselves as a, spe a specialist remedial waterproofing contractor. So we do a lot of remediation, uh, sort of post uh, post construction uh, leak detection and and remediation in the industry. Um, and we basically provide waterproofing solutions to four industries, but mainly so around strata, commercial, government, and civil. And we've done some major projects such as IKEA, uh, Westmead Hospital, uh, Camden, Bower Hospital, um, and some and the Kinghorn Cancer Centre as well. So we've done some major projects in that arena, um, and particularly also some a lot of strata roofing jobs um, at, at sort of water ingress into strata strata complexes as well. Uh, so what we'll cover today, so we'll cover five main, uh, five main things. We'll, we'll um, first in common sort of roof membranes that, that exist, especially in strata on, on some of the older complexes as well. Uh, we'll cover some of the newer membranes on the market and some of the systems that are available. Uh, maintenance plans as well, maintaining the, the roofing and, and your, your membranes. And um, also making the right choice with regards to 
what membrane is best or, or in, in what situation um, and, and the, the sort of pricing, what, what's involved in that. And we'll cover, we'll, we'll allow some time for Q&A at the end as well. All right, so um, we'll first jump into um, an area that uh, most people need to be aware of, which is the all, all the waterproofing membranes are, are categorized into classes. Um, and these classes are stipulated in the Australian standards for waterproofing. Uh, I've included it in this session just to give some general uh, knowledge about the types of membranes you may see in tenders for strata work and, and building work. And to just to, to understand that what's being uh, advised from the contractor will fit into a certain class, the type of membranes that they're recommending. So, yeah, yeah. So we just need to be mindful that um, uh, there may be times where a lot of the contractors uh, may stipulate a, uh, a certain class of membrane, but it might not always be appropriate uh, for the installation at hand. Um, so yeah, so like Daniel was saying, he'll run through the advantages and disadvantages of uh, each of the classes. Um, at least it'll give um, you guys uh, just a little bit of a better understanding of what membranes are appropriate for each uh, each circumstance. Mm -hmm. So specifically with roofing, class one wouldn't generally, you wouldn't generally see it because class one is actually quite rigid, a rigid system. Generally class ones you'll see as, uh, you know, preformed shower trays, uh, epoxy membranes, they're, they're very rigid type of, of um, membrane. So you wouldn't generally see those used in a, in a roofing situation. Um, balconies, maybe you might see it in a in a as it like a moisture barrier where you 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 put the epoxy over over the screed or something like that. But generally speaking, you wouldn't you wouldn't use a um, a class one uh, membrane on a roof. Uh, advantages definitely are they they they're, they're uh, quite resistant, so that they 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 last a while. Um, and and the disadvantages is they're quite rigid. Um, that's that's the main thing about class one membrane. Uh, class two flexible systems such as, uh, and these are in particular acrylic systems. So acrylic means uh, it's it's basically a water-based type of liquid membrane. Um, the advantages of these would be uh, they're, they're low low toxicity, so they're, they're um, they've got low VOCs, things like that. Um, some are UV stable. Um, we 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 do see some of these used on roofing, uh, and they're quite easy to clean up because they're water based as well. Yeah. These are these are generally used yeah for, for your wet areas um because there's low odor. Um, when you're in a confined space, uh, sometimes if you use a class three membrane um, that's not low VOC, um, it tends to um, yeah give out a, a, a whole heap of fumes. Uh, so that's why the class two sometimes is uh, appropriate for a certain uh, situation. Uh, the disadvantages on this type of membrane are uh, generally you with any liquid, you just got to be very, very careful of the thickness. So, and you're highly reliant on the contractor uh, for the thickness coatings. Um, so, what's used there is a is a comb to actually um, dip, you, you dip it in the liquid and you see what thickness it is. But that's only usable during the application. Um, so, you may need two to three coats for this type of system, uh, and also. There, um, there. You've got to be quite careful with the curing times as well, uh, especially in, in, in weather, yeah, different in weather cooler, situations. Cooler climates, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, class two torch-on systems. Uh, and modified bitumen membranes. So, with with um, the flexible and to, uh, flexible systems such as Torchon, um, the advantages are uh, with any sheet really is that you get a you do get a um, a con consistent sort of thickness on on these type of membranes, which is which is very good. Uh, and also um, with Torchon, they are UV stable, um, but the what makes them UV stable is generally the granules. That, that are in, sort of impregnated in the, in the membrane. Uh, the only dis, the disadvantages are also because of that fact, the, because of having the granules in there, there is a level of um, a longevity of that membrane if the granules start to wear. 
um, which then allow the UV allow UV to um, attack the bitumen, right, which makes it go sort of brittle. So the, the, that's part, partly some of the disadvantages there. Yeah, you may find um, on your um, your torch on membrane roofs, uh, you may have found that if you go up onto the roof there, you might find that there's a fair bit of granule that's uh, isolated into certain corners of the building. Uh, that's generally yeah, the uh, the wind causes that, so that tends to cause a build up into the corners of the other of the uh, the roof itself. Um, you might also find that there's um, certain times where contractors have gone up there and put a uh, light coloured coating or uh, waterproofing membrane over the top of the bitumen. That's basically number one to try and help with the um, just the amount of heat that the torch on absorbs, and number two to give it another UV coating over the top of it because it's already lost that. Uh, where the granules start to build up in the corners. And the other main sort of disadvantage also is the risk of fire because of these types of membranes are, are applied using an open, uh, an open flame. So in, in saying that also, um, it requires specialist uh, contractors to be able to install this type of membrane as well. So class three are, are, um, are more flexible. So you got so they're more flexible than the class two. And uh, this particular uh, page is about um, the, the solvent-based polyurethane. So this is a, another liquid system that's quite flexible. Um, the, the advantages of uh, solvent-based polys is obviously they are definitely more flexible and um, they are um, generally don't require um, uh, primers, things like that. Um, and they're, they're very fast cure type of membranes as well. Uh, the only disadvantages with these types, um, they can be quite, um, they, they can contain quite um, an amount of fumes as well. So especially using these in, in strata blocks and things like that, yeah. it can be an issue. Yeah, in your, in your internal areas. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they tend to uh, give out a fair bit of fume, um, but um, yeah, they're really good for external external applications. And we've seen um, also a number of polys uh, used in, in planter boxes and stuff like that. You're just gonna be quite mindful that um, these type of membranes generally aren't uh, root resistant. So you just got to be quite careful of what type of liquids, um, it, what you use in the, in the planter or on a green roof as well. Uh, another type of class three, um, a membrane, uh, your sort of sheet, other sheet, the, the other sheet systems such as PVC, butanol, rubber. Um, advantages of these, you, again, you get, you get a uniform thickness because they are a sheet membrane and uh, can be laid over damp uh, substrate, which is, which is quite useful in this case, and, um, and they are UV stable as well. Uh, a lot of these membranes are used in, um, in planter boxes because they are root resistant uh, and on green roofs, they're highly recommended on green roofs. Uh, and really the only disadvantages is that um, that does require a higher skill level and, uh, and specialist type of tool. So these G's membranes are generally, if you compare sort of material, the material costs are generally more expensive. However, on sort of a project install cost, they are quite comparable. Yeah, if you go back to a, um, just to a remedial project as well. So the advantage of these, uh, these products, they can actually be laid straight over the top of uh, an existing uh, membrane that's there. Um, so generally all it needs is just like a felt back uh, layer or a um, uh, basically like just a, a layer of material beneath that just to protect the membrane, uh, the existing membrane from the PVC. But the beauty of that is you don't need to, a lot of the times, um, if the substrate's in good order, you don't need to basically remove the existing membrane. So this can just be laid straight over the top of it. Um, and another advantage is just the longevity of the membrane. So you generally you get approximate lifespan of a, a PVC butanol uh, rubber type system, uh, generally from 30, 30 plus years. Other, um, other membranes that, that are, uh, we, we come across, especially on the older type of buildings, um, one of those is uh, what, what used to be termed as sort of hot roll and pour. Um, it still exists, um, but um, we, we, we generally see that used on the sort of older type of buildings. Um, and that's just, it's basically heated bitumen um, that gets sort of poured out onto the roof. 
Uh, the second one in the middle there is butanol rubber. So it's an older type of, um, of rubber uh, membrane that we, that we see. And, um, and the last one is the asbestos-based sort of bitumen membranes where it's impregnated with, a, with an asbestos. Um, all these types of membranes can be worked with. So you can, you can either, you know, there are options. You can, you can go over them, you can remove them, you can, so there's, there's always options with, the, with, with, with existing roofing, there are always options. Some of the uh, type of issues we, we, you could, that occur, um, the, these three here are, are um, a main sort of roofing issues or, or you know, roofing, uh, either planter boxes on roofs or green roof issues. Um, uh, you, you'll see sort of salt, some form of salting uh, is, is very common. Uh, and the um, and for example, in the far right one there, it would be salting down into, into, the, into the slab below. Uh, in either a car park situation or, or an apartment, uh, generally they can be repaired. So uh, you can repair them from the top, which is the best way to do it, uh, or you can in inject them with a membrane as well. Yeah, it just depends on the severity of the uh, issues at hand. Uh, obviously, they all need to be treated um, on their own merit. Um, some of the times, um, yeah, like Daniel said, you can do it from below, um, but yeah, it, it'd be a case by case scenario. Yep. Other issues that we see um, on roofing and balconies actually as well is the uh, use of fillets and bond breakers and the, the preparation of the, of the areas. So um, um, a bond breaker is states what it's supposed to do and, and, and it, it's not supposed to actually bond to the membrane. It's used as, a, as um, it's used to basically allow the membrane to, to flex, yeah, along the, along the floor wall junction. So we see often that the wrong type of sealant or the wrong, the wrong type of bond breaker is used for that particular membrane. Uh, this is just an example of, um, of particular uh, terminations uh, on a roof, um, especially on a parapet. Um, this, is, this is a drawing on the right, it's a drawing from the Australian Standard uh, where the fixing actually penetrates through the capping and the membrane. So we would advise using a um, concealed fixing system, which is what, what's on the left there, where the brackets are fixed to the membrane and then the cappings actually actually clips over the, the fixings. It's just a, a detail there for roofing. It's quite useful. So traditional versus inverted roof systems. Um, so on the left is the traditional um, roofing system uh, that we see quite often used. Um, if you can see, the, basically you've got the concrete deck, uh, a primer of some sort, and then you've got the two layers of membrane, the insulation, filter cloth, and then the stone ballast. The design generally was used to, uh, the stone ballast was sort of your reflective medium, and then you're getting your sort of R value from that and then the insulation. Uh, the only problem that um, has sort of come from that design is that uh, water can still get through into the insulation. So um, uh, look, it, more, more recent designs of insulation, that sort of does prevent water, like with the new versions of insulation, high density. Yeah, we're also starting to see a few issues at hand with birds as well, starting to yep. get the stone ballast up um, and then dropping them uh, from multiple levels up, uh, yeah, from the roof itself down, uh, which is starting to cause a fair bit of problem now. So yeah, the, uh, a lot of the designers now are starting to keep that in mind now and looking at the inverted system, uh, which is basically, Daniel will run you through how that, uh, how that gets installed. Yeah, so the main, the main issue that with the one on the left is a couple of issues. One, one is the, the R value significantly drops if, if there's water found or water impregnates into the insulation. Because water is a conductive medium, it just conducts heat all the way through to the membrane. Um, and then the other issue then is then if there's an issue with the membrane, you've got to remove those layers to actually repair the membrane uh, if, if, if need be or, or, or maintain it or test it or, or whatever. Um, the newer design now, which is the one on the right, is um, now sort of coming into Australia now. We're seeing that more often. 
Uh, it's actually more sort of Europe, used a lot in Europe and, and overseas. Um, now that this design is coming in more into play now, we're seeing that a lot more used in, in, uh, in strata and roofing design, where, where it's basically you've got the, um, the concrete deck and then the, the, mem the, um, sorry, the insulation is then fixed to the deck and then you've got the membrane exposed on, on, the, on the roof. So the membrane then is protecting the the insulation as well as providing the reflective medium. Reflectivity, yeah. Yeah. So um, that that provides some real advantage. So then so then you've also got because you've got the membrane exposed, one, it's easier to maintain, very easy. Um, and then you can also repair it quite easy and you're not allowing moisture to get below into the insulation, basically. Um, this is a diagram form from uh, FATRA, so, so it just sort of shows you a couple of options uh, for sheet membrane installation. Uh, one being fully adhered, so using glues to actually adhere the insulation down and, and the membrane. And then the one below that's mechanically fixed. It, each, each offer advantages and disadvantages. Um, uh, one is definitely programming and noise, uh, uh, you know, if you're working on an existing uh, roofing block. Um, any, yeah, you just have to be mindful to the circumstances. Um, so there's actually a, a project that we're looking at uh, at the moment, which is um, the, one of the helicopter pads for a hospital. Um, so a situation like that, we'd probably consider a mechanically fixed system because it, um, it just assists with uplift um, of wind. So yeah, we just have to be mindful of each of the situations um, before we come up with a, a proper solution for each of the issues at hand. So this is a, a uh, design of a, a, a typical sort of green roof um, system. We're seeing definitely more of this design in new build in Strata as well now. Um, highly, highly, highly recommend a roof, roof resistant sheet membrane system on a green roof. Uh, in this case, this is, it's, they're, they're, they're showing it's the Duo HT, which is essentially a root resistant torchon. Um, and then so you, you're seeing the vapor barrier there, the, the, the um, the insulation, the PIR board, the membrane, the drainage, uh, so some sort of draining cell, and then you'll have the soil and, and uh, vegetation. Um, this sort of system, um, great for um, uh, like uh, energy efficiency and also uh, testing the membrane and, and you can still test the membrane and maintain it even though you've got the soil and, and growing medium on top as well. And on the left there, it just, it just does say that um, the growing medium should not have aggressive, an aggressive root system if possible. Um, you just want to be able to yeah, uh, stop that, stop the chances of uh, root systems entering the membrane joints and stuff. Yeah, that's one thing that we highly recommend. Um, the amount of times that we've installed the correct systems and then um, they end up putting in the wrong plantations uh, within the actual planter boxes itself. So. Yeah, you just gotta you gotta be very mindful of the type of uh, plants that are chosen uh, for each of these planter boxes. Okay, maintenance planning. So, um, just a couple of points on maintenance planning. Um, um, the every supplier will actually, in their terms, actually have a form or clause um, indicating that membranes, especially if they're exposed in, in the case of sort of a torchon roof, flat concrete roof or, or PVC, some sort of exposed system that they are maintained. Um, you, uh, by rights, you, you will need to show that, that you, you're maintaining that, that roof. Generally speaking, if, if the supplier does find or, or see that the, there is just no, no maintenance at all, they can actually void the, void the warranty, the material warranty. So it is definitely recommended that you do uh, put in place some form of maintenance planning uh, on, a, on a roof uh, membrane system. We, we currently do them now for, for any sort of new, new roof that we, we install. This, this diagram here is just a quick, um, uh, just, just to understand uh, what, what the sort of projection of those costs and, and why maintenance planning is important. Um, you, you, basically what this graph shows is that 
um, the the if you the 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 the, the, the um, when we're not maintaining or, or doing any preventative maintenance, um, what happens is the occurrence of major failures um, occur more will call, occur more often and will, will can then ex the deterioration of the roof will accelerate exponentially. So, um, so, so the costs will increase more often and more exponentially when, when preventative maintenance is not part of the plan, basically. So a couple of things um, in the standard that, that um, generally are checked for in, in maintenance. A um, couple of things like the, the lapse of the membrane are checked. Um, that can be checked by uh, using the, a manual sort of tool to, to probe, probe the joint uh, and also machinery, uh, electromagnet or electro te or, or testing machinery can be used also to check the lapse. Uh, drainage is also checked. So the clamps in the drain, making sure the membrane is still bonded in the drainage and also making sure that the drains are clear of any, any debris as well. Yeah, a lot of the time we uh, may go onto a rooftop um, and just like general uh, cleanliness of the roof as well. So the amount of trades that go up onto the roof. Um, so we'll ensure that there's um, there's basically a sign on the door before they get out onto the roof or near the access hatch uh, that leads onto the roof. Um, just with our details on there, just to mm. ensure that any contractors that work on top of the roof um, are basically informing us if there's any drilling or any works to be carried out to the, to the membrane itself. Um, just to eliminate anything moving forward. Other things that are checked are definitely the, the um, terminations. So this, this detail here is a typical termination uh, of a sheet system. And um, the, the, the things that you, we, we check are basically the, any, any sort of flashing, over flashing, um, any regulates that might have, you know, may have popped off or things like that. They're, they're the sort of things that you need to double check on um, on the termination side of a roofing membrane. Yeah, a lot of terminations um, with a traditional torch on membrane application, sometimes they just rely on a pressure seal. Um, so you've got to be mindful with the, uh, with the pressure seals. Um, you tend to get like, um, say your cockatoos and so forth, that tend to get a liking for some of the sealants that are used. Mm. Um, so you just got to make sure that if, if the contractor or um, whoever's installed the membrane has basically used the pressure seal, you just got to be mindful that that's always an easy point uh, for any pest damage. Um, so yeah, the number of times that we've seen uh, birds just starting to pick at things and which lead to further further issues down the track if it's not uh, if you're not on top of it. Cool uh, and uh, exactly what Wayne was talking about so the, the, the other detail that's shown here is using a pressure seal. Uh, a couple of issues with this one is that the sealant um, is it's exposed is the exposed yeah is exposed so if that was to wear or if there's an issue with the sealant, um, it will allow water um, directly to hit the membrane uh, in this case. Uh, so that's where the issues are. Uh, some of the other um, issues are if the wrong sealant is used, um, the membrane, if the membrane's touching the sealant, especially if it's a polyurethane type of sealant and the, and a, the, the membrane's like a, like a torch on bitumen, um, the bitumen will attack the the uh, the polyurethane seal and, and re re like sort of withdraw the the plasticizers out of it, uh, which then makes it go brittle. So um, and that's that's how that's how then over time the sealant can degrade uh, quite quickly. Uh, a couple of other things, um, especially the, with penetrations on a roof. Um, sometimes there, there is no sealant um, or a compatible sealant needs to be used and the clamps aren't installed around the pipes as well. But they, that, that's a common issue as well uh, with, with um, penetrations on a roof. So the clamps are basically just like a stainless steel strap um, that gets installed around the membrane and that ho helps hold the membrane in place. Um, and yeah, a lot of the times you can purchase them from Bunnings or um, even a lot of the plumbing supplies. Um, and like Daniel said, it just gets finished off with a sealant just above that. And this is just another detail on roofs that, that gets checked as well. Just the, um, the, uh, the overflow drains, things like that. Just making sure that um, the, like the detail is correct. Um, 
you know, is the, is the overflow blocked, things like that, just simple things that we need to check um, on, a, on a roof. Um, this is an example of a maintenance check um, that we, we would actually do. So um, basically, your it, it offers a few advantages. One is one is that you you're sort of tracking you're tracking the maintenance and what trades go up there, and also allows you to sort of triage the issues. So what's most important? What's a potential failure for the membrane? What can be left till later? Things like that. That that um, you know, if you, you you're trying to budget for the repairs, you can then triage those or you know prioritize those. Um, accordingly uh, on a maintenance plan. So making the right choice um, on different types of membranes and situations. So um, I've included um, these, basically the sort of the three main major groups of membranes that get, we, we see a lot of. Uh, generally liquids, um, uh, quite common in new build um, situations. The cost is a lot cheaper in a lot of situations. Um, on roofing type of membranes, um, we find that a uh, liquid will be used. Issues with the liquid uh, would be the lifespan, generally. Uh, they just don't last as long um, and they need to be recoded sometimes as well. Yeah, the problem is you've got to be mindful as well with the liquid membranes. Um, if you get any stress, uh, stress uh, fractures within the concrete, a liquid membrane um, will not cope with the, the movement of the crack that occurs within the concrete itself. Um, so you've got to be mindful that um, a lot of the times a liquid membrane might be installed um, and you might find six months uh, down the track that cracks start appearing within the concrete um, and it, it'll just, it'll, it'll basically just come straight through the, the actual liquid membrane itself. So it's, it's not designed to basically move on a crack where the membrane's bonded direct to the concrete. Um, on an upturn, different story. So it's designed to move, but yeah, on any stress fractures within the concrete, it's not designed to, to take and cope with that. Um, next, next major type is bitumen sheet or what we term as torchon membrane. Uh, definitely lasts a lot longer. Um, you generally get a warranty, you know, between 10, 20 years from suppliers uh, generally. Um, and the lifespan is a lot longer. So you, you, you'll generally get 30 years out of the membrane easily. Um, and, and you know maintaining it things like that you, you'll get you'll get a good good amount of years out of it um, and like I said before um, you just got to be mindful of the granules are the are the are the uh, UV protection on a bitumen sheet so granules start to wear if there's a lot of foot traffic things like that if you're using it exposed that 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 poses issues on a, on a bitumen sheet yeah as I said earlier with the with the granules you can coat over the top of the bitumen membrane which is becoming more common now to try and help with the reflectivity um, of the like basically of just heat um, that comes off the membrane itself because the membrane's black yeah right? exactly yep. so um yeah we, we are finding it's more common now where um, some of the clients are asking for a, a two or three layer bitumen sheet membrane system with an overcoating uh, over the top lighting color. Um, so that is another option to help uh, assist in, uh, in, in that type of circumstance. And then the last one, generally, you've got PVC uh, rubber or, or your butanol sheet. Um, these type of membranes definitely last a lot longer. They're designed, they're designed for roofing um, and you get, you get a, a much longer lifespan um, and warranty from the suppliers on these types of membranes just because they're the, you know, they are designed for roofing and, and a lot of the membranes that we see now are designed in, in, in Europe and, um, you know, so they're, they're, they're designed to withstand a lot of the weather conditions uh, in Australia. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, so, um, so there's, there's different supplies, different types of um, uh, PVC and butanol sheet membranes that are available. Uh, so we tend to steer that towards these types, especially in remedial as well. Um, actually, I'll answer this question now because Pete's just posted posted in something earlier, which is, does ponding affect uh, the butanol rubber or PVC sheet membranes over time? Um, definitely the membranes, uh, these types of the sheet membranes, definitely with sand ponding um, uh, over time. Yeah, so these, these type of membranes, uh, Pete, they're actually designed as well to be installed within tanks. Um, so yeah, when it, when it comes to ponding, um, it's not, not an issue at all. Yeah. Um, the only thing is you just got to be mindful of, um, any potential slip hazards, uh, just depends on, on how bad the ponding is. 
generally we like to uh, to to put some topping down and just try and correct the falls. But um, yeah, look, it, it, it won't affect the membrane at all. So there's no issue with that. Um, these are just what, what some of the systems look like. So um, so on the left, you'll see PVC. There's other types, the, the actual picture, that roof, the actual roof is a TPO. So they're, they're, they're sort of sheet roofing systems. Um, and the PVC systems is that hexagonal roof um, that we've, we've done for a, for a um, house as well. The middle, the middle one is the roof torch on, and you can see the sort of the green, uh, the greenish tinge on that are the actual granules on the on the torch on. And the last one is a terrace that we did in in the Ardex uh, system, the butanol system. Um, it actually contains a polypropylene coating that you can direct direct stick tiles onto as well on that system. A quick slide on uh, root resistance too. So some I've included this one. Normally we cover this in planter boxes, but on green roofs, it, very very common uh, issue as well is the root resistance. Uh, so what I'm showing you there is just how roots can actually enter uh, the wrong. You know, the, if the wrong type of membrane is used, once a little pinhole is found, it's yeah the roots will just attack it. Yeah, we've even uh, seen these circumstances on a sheet membrane that's been used, um, but it was the wrong choice of sheet membrane. So it wasn't actually the root uh, resistant type of membrane. And it, it, once the roots uh, are looking for water, it'll just, it'll find a way, it'll penetrate a way through it. Yeah. So some of the examples of uh, root resistant type of membranes, you've got the Ardex root repel, uh, Sarnafil, uh, Seeker Sarnafil flag on and uh, index defend. Uh, I'm pretty sure Fatra has one too, but yeah, 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 as well. Uh, so a lot of the PVC sheet type of membranes and, and butanols have uh, have root, root resistant uh, properties as well. Um, so making the right choice. Look, um, on on a lot of projects, we we like to talk about the iron triangle, um, but basically what this shows is you really can only choose two types. Uh, sorry, two of the options of the three. Uh, the other one will you'll have to uh, either forego or, or becomes an issue. For example, if you want to, if you're focusing on getting a faster system down, um, but the scope is quite complex, um, you're going to pay the price. So it'll be a, a lot, lot more costly. Um, if you uh, if you sort of want to go. Um, you know, you want a faster system put down, a good system as well. So, like you know, a, a high high quality, a high, a more more expensive system as well. Um, the scope has to be, you know, you, you the, the scope will be more complex as well. So, so things th th things to think about with, um, especially in remedial or your roofing job. What are you protecting? You know, if if you're just going to go cost driven. Um, you always if the if the price is the only thing you're focusing on, you, your your um, your quality will suffer. So the scope and the and the time uh, will will suffer. Um, so so um, so that's just what we like to explain to a lot of people and, and how we approach remediation uh, in this situation. Couple of case studies. Uh, this one here was a large roof that we did in uh, in Cooper Street, uh, Surrey Hills. Uh, as you can see, this is the so basically the the, the photos uh, you're seeing there are what the state of the existing roof. They've tried to minimise a lot of the water ingress um, into the property by laying a, a, some builders film down. Um, and yeah, they just they just had a lot of issues where uh, you know things left on the roof and stuff like that. So this actual, this actual roof was, um, was uh, it, it, they had a crack at waterproofing this uh, about two, I think it was two times uh, in the past. So um, yeah, it had been quite costly for the, uh, for the owners out there. Um, so this, uh, yeah, this did have a fair bit of work that was involved in it. Um, but in the end, we, um, yeah, we ended up uh, laying a, an additional layer of waterproofing uh, down over the top. Uh, so where you can see the yellow uh, builder's film. So that was actually, a, uh, I think there was a two layer torch on underneath that. So we, we ended up putting a, an additional layer of torch on over the top of that. We corrected some of the falls where there was uh, quite heavy ponding. 
Um, underneath the tennis court area that you could see just the, um, the photo just in the center of the screen there. Um, so the, the tennis court itself, we ended up laying a PVC membrane underneath the tennis court. Um, and then all the parapet walls, we ended up uh, putting an elastomeric membrane over the top of and new composite uh, timber decking down. So that was a, that was a nice complex uh, project, that one. So these are some of the photos um, during installation. So yeah, so that's just a couple of photos of the Torchon that we had to, um, we basically had to uh, prop up the pool decking and then we slid some of the, slid the Torchon, new Torchon layer underneath that. And this is the tennis court. So tennis court was done in a PVC uh, membrane and then um, new turf was laid over the top. So we did the PVC in the center of the roof due to the thickness um, required a different, um, basically due to playing tennis on the, on the tennis yeah. court. Uh, you didn't want sort of thick, thicker laps uh, due to the torch on. And this is the final finish. So we, um, over the uh, membrane, we installed the decking uh, and also used the paver pedestal system. Uh, advantages being you don't have to use topping um, and also ease of access to the membrane to maintain it if you need be. Yeah, definitely. So I'll just touch on that again. Um, just if there are any issues further on down the track, so you might find 10, 15 years down the track, there might be an issue that uh, arises the beauty of this system um, number one, there's nothing penetrated through the actual membrane itself. And number two, you can just easily uh, remove the, either the composite uh, timber decking boards um, or the, the, the pavers itself. So you can lift them up um, and you can basically see it. So um, that's the beauty of this system. So it does work out a little bit more expensive than your traditional toppings. Um, but uh, another advantage of that is you're not putting um, any, any further undue stress on the actual um, structure itself, like with weight. Um, and just, yeah, secondly, is just basically access to it. You've always got access to it. And the last case study is Campbelltown Hospital. So this one here, um, an older sort of um, butanol was used on the roof. And as you can see, there's quite a patch, lot, lot of patchwork being done to try and stop a lot of the leaks uh, in the older photos there. And then on the, on the uh, we, we installed a new um, PVC membrane on the roof there. And what you can see there, the gray uh, sort of walkway pads um, on there is for the foot traffic. So they're also heat bolded to the membrane itself. So it's just to encourage um, foot traffic to follow the path, any tr or trades and things like that, sort of a, another protection, protective layer on the PVC membrane. Uh, and at the hospital, we, um, we do a maintenance plan for them as well. So we, we go in and clean that membrane and bring it up sort of pretty much like brand new. Yeah, so actually the, the photo that you can see just in the middle uh, towards the bottom there, um, that was actually after one of the maintenance uh, plan uh, clean. So as you can see, it, it actually comes up in, like brand new once we, uh, we get the, the machine over the top of it to, to clean it. So it's fairly easy to, to keep clean. Um, so all we use is just like a mild detergent uh, on that and it, it comes up like brand new and it, it keeps the, the reflectivity uh, index high as well. So it, it, it actually assists in reflectivity by keeping it clean. All right, um, that's the um, pretty much the information session. I'll, I'll jump into uh, some of the questions, and then we might open it up, um, open it up to the group um, for some more questions if you'd like. Happy, happy to take it over audio if you'd like. If you'd like to unmute, so I'll, I'll read through some of the questions that have been posted in um, already. So I've, we've had one had one from Richard about the additives. So we, we, we um, it's in particular in roof deck. So um, what we find with a lot of new builds, uh, builders will put in an additive into the concrete uh, and then um, just leave that as, at, or, 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 you know, that's the membrane. So they, they, don't, they don't put any additional membranes on that. Um, common problem is we, we find that uh, that's also very common in basements as well that they do that. Uh, and we would advise to ensure you install a membrane or, or over, over that deck, even though it's got the additives in it. Couple of issues, look, um, uh, 
the suppliers will have sort of, a, a, you know, they'll have properties in there where, you know, the bridges are the crack or, or that, you know, it crystallizes and block, blocks the leak and things like that. But mm. you just can't guarantee how, how much the concrete's going to move. Uh, that's, that's sort of the main issue we've found. Yeah, yeah same thing. So, yeah. Um, yeah, once it, once you do start to get cracks that appear, um, it, it basically, a lot of the suppliers will come out and just say, look, it voids a warranty because you've got a, a stress uh, fracture within the concrete mm. as such. So, yeah, we look, we don't recommend it. We always recommend that there is some sort of physical membrane over the top of the substrate um, mm -hmm. just because it's, it's there. That's it. That's your protective layer, you know. So, um, yeah, we can't stress the importance of it. Yep, yep. Um, uh, one from Karen. So roof, roof membrane maintenance required adding solar panels to the roof uh, post installing a new membrane. That's a really, really good one because um, what we find is uh, one, sometimes solar panels are installed on a roof and then, then they think about the membrane. So then what happens is the solar panels will outlast the membrane. Membrane fails. So then you've got to remove all the solar panels and then install the a new membrane and install the solar panels back again. So highly, highly advise to review the roof as a whole, um, especially if you've got, or you're looking at solar. Um, so post, so adding solar panels um, to uh, post installing a new membrane, definitely have to have, um, ensure that the contractor checks all or all if any of the penetrations mm -hmm. uh, on the membrane anything else you would check um i would just check yeah how long it's been down for number one like if yeah if you if you're putting the um the solar panels down um you want to ensure that the membrane is going to last the age like the length of time of the solar panel um because like daniel said there's nothing worse than uh, installing your solar panels to an existing roof membrane your roof membrane's probably only got another five years of lifespan left in it, but your solar panel's guaranteed for 25 years. So you kind of want to have your membrane that outlasts your, your solar panel because your solar panel sits on top of your membrane. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Awesome. Um, Pete, um, Pete mentioned just more interest about the termination details at a shallow parapet wall uh, using bituminous sheet membrane. So that was the two diagrams that we showed earlier um on the on the sheet membrane side um i can what i will do if you'd like I'd, i'll um i can send you those those slides from the from the presentation basically there's two ways of doing it one is the reglet into the parapet wall and you're flashing over it or you're fixing the sheet membrane using a pressure seal mm. just depends on the heights that yeah. you've got um Sometimes it may be, you may have to look at it and say, look, if there's a, a topping there and they've raised it too high to get the falls, you may have to look at the design of it itself because you, you really want a minimum of 150 millimeter turn up. So anything less than that contravenes the standard. So um, yeah, you've just got to be mindful of that as well. If you haven't got much room to play with, you've got to look at the design of the roof itself and try and get back to, um, yeah, back to substrate and, and see if you can increase the height somehow or you increase the, the height of the hob if that's an option. Nice. Um, Nicola, recommended preventative maintenance. So um, we're happy to send you a, um, an example of what we would do uh, for, for maintenance. So we'll, we'll, see, we'll email that through if you like. Yeah, we're also starting to uh, maintain existing rooftops that uh, may not have necessarily been installed by ourselves. Um, so there's a couple of roofs now that we're starting to maintain. So that's also, um, yeah, if that's something that you're, uh, worth, uh, yeah, maybe looking at, um, yeah, closer. That's something that we can help you with. Yeah, great. And Owen, uh, when to use bonded and unbonded screeds in conjunction with waterproof membranes? Any comments on that? Yeah, so just your your, your bonded screeds. So generally, that your bonded screeds are for your, um, your probably your class one, the class twos. Um, if you start using like your solvent-based polyurethanes or your sheet membranes, <laughs> it'd have to be an unbonded screed. Um, because it it, it, no, it it just doesn't stick to it. You can there are circumstances where you can broadcast some aggregate or some sand through the actual solvent-based polyurethane uh, to try and get it to bond. But um, yeah, generally with the solvents, um, it's an unbonded screed and, and it's uh, generally 40 mil minimum at your at your floor waste. Um, so yeah, you'd have to. It depends on the size of the the area um, that you've got there. But um, generally, yeah, you, you couldn't go any less than 40 mil uh, and reinforced to. Yeah. 
And Lana's asked one about a most suitable sheet membrane system for a fiddly roof, such as timber substrates, plant uh, on the roof, sort of how much easier is it really to detail a PVC system in comparison to a bitumen one? Oh, uh, that's a good question. It is, yeah. If it's on a timber timber substrate, you can still use a bitumen. Just depends on how much detail there is. Uh, so there's a self-adhered base layer. Yep. Um, and then you torch to that, so you're not actually torching a naked flame to your timber substrate. But um, yeah, generally, look, if there's a bit of um, if there's a bit of detail involved uh, and it's on timber, we'd probably recommend a PVC. Um, or you could also look at the um, the WPM range, like the Ardex range, WPM uh, one thousand, if it's going to be covered. Yeah, um, but mind you, the WPM one thousand, the heat itself doesn't affect the membrane quality. All it does, it affects the felt layer uh, on top of the membrane. So yeah, so we'd um, yeah, there's a few different so a few different um, types of membrane that you can use. Um, we use yeah, PVC generally. also, like yeah, like an, on um, if there's a lot of plant and if you can, if there's a way to prop the plant up as well, like if you if you can get under it and we can slide the sheet underneath, that is an option. Um, if if the whole roof is just covered in in uh, you know plinths and plant items and that you you may have to you may have to liquid. look at a liquid you, liquid. you may you yeah. may have to there's yeah. there's no other option. Yeah. But like Daniel said, yeah. if there are if there are plant that's able to be uh, lifted slightly, um, you got to remember that the PVC sheets are only 1.5 to 2 mil thick. Uh, some of them go up to like 2.3 mil. But um, if that's the case, all we've got to do is prop that up a little bit, whatever the plan or equipment is, and generally we just slide it straight underneath there. Um, so yeah, it's the PVC is a fairly uh, fairly versatile. Okay. Um, okay. So one from Darren: um, How long would an ad, uh, additive last? Good question. That is a good question. <laughs> um, yeah, it is a good question. Depends what their guarantees. I yeah, suppose, that's yeah. right. So so additives um, are a good question because. I, I personally don't actually know how long they would give yeah. uh, on an additive. That's why I'm assuming with, with your additive, just from yeah. experience, I think generally they give you a 10 to 20 year product guarantee. Um, but I suppose that it, it it'd, uh, all depend on from supplier to supplier. Yeah. But I'm assuming they'd probably give you a minimum of uh, yeah, 10, 10 year product guarantee. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, one from Stephen. Um, g'day, Stephen. On the on the liquid membrane, we, do you always require an overflashing when terminating on a wall? Act, well, according to the standard, yes, um, you you do um, actually need to do that because according to the Australian standard, um, you, you do have to have some form of overflashing uh, over the over the membrane. Otherwise, you could just overflash it with the actual liquid uh, with, yeah. liquid membrane itself. As long as it's yeah. going over the top of the the parapet wall or something, so you need to protect. You can't just turn up 150 oh, mil. Well, what what then, he means is if if the if the membrane terminates up 100 mil, 150 mm -hmm. mil, the in the standard it says to overflash. Oh, as in a regular. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. 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 So if yeah, that's yeah. if that's the exposed system. Generally, you'd have some form of correct, um, yeah. yeah overflashing. Correct. Um, Darren, will the meeting be available online? Yes, uh, we will we'll definitely make that available for 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 everybody. Any other questions? Post them through, or if you want to unmute, that's cool too. If you want to ask something quickly, that's all good as well. Any other questions? No, nothing. All right. All right, everyone. I think, thanks a lot, Karen. Um, yes, we'll be doing a lot more of these sessions as uh, once a month, actually, we do them. So um, um, thanks for, thanks for uh, joining us. Well, listen, thanks everybody. It's been great. Um, hope, you, hope it was very um, uh, useful for everybody. Please email us if you've got any questions, any further questions that you might want answers to. And I'm um, looking forward to see you all on the next session uh, next month. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.